Hi everyone, welcome to this small art haul and swatching video. I'm going to combine the two this time because we only have a few bits and pieces here. So I'm going to show them to you and then I'm going to swatch them out so we can have a look at them. So I'm currently still in Suffolk. I'm at my mum's kitchen table. <laughs> so once again, I don't have my normal filming setup. Um, I will be heading back to Suffolk. No, sorry. <laughs> I'll be heading back to Surrey later this month. Um, so I've got a little while longer here. But um, yeah, I've been here for about four weeks now nearly. So yes, um, I've had a few little Jackson's orders while I've been here. So most of these were purchased again with my affiliate credit, although I did add a little bit of money here and there as well. So right, let's start with the Liquitex acrylic gouache. Now I got these because somebody, one of my subscribers suggested to me um, that I should try them or asked me whether I had tried them. I can't remember now, but um, I was quite curious about them because if you know me, you'll know that I use the Turner acrylic gouache and also the Holbein. I love both of them. I've been using the Holbein for years. Um, the Turner more recently, but really like both brands. I was very curious as to how the Liquitex acrylic gouache would differ from those two. Um, I will confess that I have already swatched this out in a video on my Patreon. So for my patrons, I did a special video where I tried these for the first time. I did like a little review of them and we did some colour mixing because this is quite an interesting little set. It cost, I think when I bought it, it was like £25 from Jackson's but I think it's since gone up a little bit in price. Art materials are going up in price almost like weekly at the moment. I mean, I only bought this a couple of weeks or so ago and already it's gone up a bit, but you get six different colors. So you get the primary colors, you get primary yellow, primary red, primary blue. Um, you get emerald green, Mars black and titanium white. So it gives you quite a lot of mixing possibilities. And as I just wanted to try these to see whether I liked them and kind of do a little review of them, I thought this was the ideal set to start with, just to see whether I like them as a paint. I'm not going to tell you at the moment what I thought of these because that was for my patrons. But what I will do for you on YouTube is I'm going to film a painting process video where I work entirely with these paints and you can see what I think of them as we go along. Um, the colour mixing video I did was really interesting because you can mix such a variety of colours with these. But I also added, because I knew that this would be a good addition, um, I added the unbleached titanium Liquitex gouache. Um, this is a slightly bigger bottle than the ones you get in that little set, but this is such a useful colour to have because it gave me a much wider range of mixing possibilities. So yeah, we may be using that too in the video, but I'm going to film the art process video sometime soon. I hope ideally it would be while I'm still in Suffolk. If not, it will be when I get back to Surrey. But um, yeah, I'd really like to show you these paints in action. So we're going to do that then. The other thing that I've purchased since I've been in Suffolk is this lovely little palette. So this is like a um, basic ceramic palette. You've got your little wells here. So it'd be really good for watercolour. But what I've actually been using it for so far is the acrylic gouache because with acrylic gouache, you don't want to be using a plastic palette. And I realised that I didn't actually have a ceramic palette here in Suffolk. Um, so this one will be staying in Suffolk. I won't be taking that back to Surrey with me because I have quite a few palettes in Surrey. But um, yeah, this one has been really useful while I've been here. And on the other side, it's actually reversible. So I really like this, the fact that you can have it either way up It'll be totally stable because it's um, the sides are completely level. Um, so yeah, you can have these, how many do you get? 12 mixing wells there, or you can choose to have the smaller ones and this nice big mixing area here. This is what's really useful for me when I'm working in acrylic gouache. Um, but yeah, this would be great for watercolors. I think this was about 
about 15 pounds I want to say 15 pounds 90 it was something like that it feels a nice quality palette and if you're looking for one that's not too big and that you can use both sides of and have some options this could be a good one so yeah from Jackson's again all of these are from Jackson's did I mention that I think I did um okay let's have a look so a few other little bits in here so this is something new for me I've been wanting to try these for ages I actually ordered three but um they sold out of one of them <laughs> and um so they refunded the money basically but I've got a couple of um, Caran d'Ache Neo Pastels. So these are oil pastels. I decided to get an olive grey and a khaki green. The other one I'd ordered was ash grey, which looked like a kind of greyish green or greenish grey, greenish grey. Um, it was quite pale. Um, I'm sad that they didn't have that one, but I will, I will add it at another time. But I'm interested in trying these. Um, I thought they'd be good for my mixed media landscapes because I'm heavily into greens at the moment. But yeah, really excited to try those actually. Um, I really like those colours. So we're going to swatch those out in a moment. And then in here, I have something pretty exciting. So I've been wanting to try these for a while um, since I first saw them on Jackson's actually several months ago. And then I went to get them the other week when they were on an offer and they'd sold out of the colours I wanted. So I had to wait for them to come back into stock. Um, they're the, I don't know whether you say Isaro, Isaro. Um, they're from Belgium. This is crafted in Belgium. They're like extra fine honey watercolours. This one is called Imperial Moon. I think this might have a slight shimmer to it, but it looked like a really interesting paint on the swatch, a really interesting colour. Um, the other one I got, because I couldn't resist, was this powdery pink. I love the name as well. Um, so yeah, we'll be swatching one of these in a minute. And Steel Blue, which also looked lovely. So they are really cute little tubes, actually. I love the style of them. Um, so yeah, it'd be really interesting to have a look at those finally and see what those are like. In here, I have, again, something new. Whoops, let's just move that box, shall we? Um, the Artgraph Tailor Shape Water Soluble. I don't know what we call these. Kind of like a watercolour. Um, this one is graphite in the centre here. So this one's going to be slightly shiny. Um, I think you can use them to draw on the paper and you can also use them with a brush like you would um, say a pan of watercolour. Um, this white is meant to be really quite opaque which I thought would be really useful. So we have a white, a black and a graphite. Um, they come in this little cork palette I guess you call it. So yeah I'm really interested to try these. I know quite a few people who use them and I've had my eye on them for a while. Okay, so what does it say on the back? It says, inspired by the traditional tailor's chalk, Art Graph Tailor Shape is a rich pigment slash smooth graphite block designed for drawing and painting. Extremely soft and water soluble. This set allows you to create a wide range of shades from the light ones to deep and opaque. It's an excellent tool for drawing and painting. Okay, so we'll give those a go and I'll let you know my first impressions of those. And in here we have a selection of pencils and a couple of pens as well. So I think what I'm going to do with these is just get my sketchbook and we'll swatch them out and I'll tell you um, which colour they are, which brand they are as we go. The sketchbook I'm using here, by the way, is the Art Space one. This came in the Upcrate Art Supplies subscription box. Um, I'm really liking the paper in this, so I thought it'd be good to swatch on this. Okay, let's start and put those there. Let's start with something new for me. I got a couple of the Derwent Pro Colour pencils, Spruce Green and Cedar Green. 
Um, these look like lovely greens. I have never tried the Pro Color pencils before. I like the Derwent Light Fast. In fact, I love the Derwent Light Fast. <laughs> They're one of my favorite pencils and I really love the Derwent drawing as well. So let's try these. Let's just give this a little... Oh gosh, that is a lovely green, isn't it? I will hold these up to the camera at the end so you can get a better idea of how they really look because I'm going to just write it. Let's write spruce green. Oh, it's not easy to write with this. If I put D, P, C, that will stand for Derwent Pro Color. Um, I'm loving that. It's a really lovely dark, slightly bluish green. Um, they feel quite nice actually on that paper. But yeah, I'll hold it up so you can have a good look at the end. So this one is cedar green. That's a beautiful, natural, kind of earthy, slightly, would we call it a mossy green? Very, very nice. I'm beginning to wish that I had actually got a different pencil for writing the names, but it will do. Yeah, they're both really nice. They feel nice. I'll have to work with them a bit more and then I'll let you know what I think of them. I can't see myself getting lots of Pro Color pencils because the range wasn't entirely light fast and being used to working with Luminance and um, the Derwent Light Fast, I should say actually Karen Dash Luminance. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a bit. <laughs> Karen Dash Luminance. Um, and the Derwent Light Fast, both are really highly light fast ranges of pencils and I don't have to worry um, whether there are any light fast issues with them. So um, I know with this set I would have to, so um, I've got those two colours. I just wanted to try them, I was just curious and the colours look absolutely lovely. But yeah, I don't want to be worrying about whether things are light fast or not. I believe these two colours are pretty light fast. Mm. Um, one other pencil I have in here, which is actually a restock. This is another Derwent pencil. This is the Derwent Drawing Green Shadow. The reason I ordered another one of these is because I love it. I'm going to swatch that there. Oh gosh, these are so creamy actually compared to the other ones. Yeah, I came to Suffolk without it and I actually thought it would be handy to have one. So I just ordered it. <laughs> Okay, um, green, oh gosh, I really can't write with this one, green shadow, yeah, not good for writing. If I do DD, it means Derwent drawing. Let's just take those marker pens out, we'll do those in a second. So the rest are Luminance and Derwent Light Fast. Let's do the luminance first. So this is another restock. Um, this is olive yellow. This has fast become one of my favorite luminance pencils. That beautiful yellow green. Gorgeous and perfect for this time of the year. So um, yeah, while I was ordering, I just decided to order um, another one of those. Actually, I'm gonna write in this book with my uni ball pen because you're not going to see it if I write with this one so olive yellow this isn't the neatest swatching I've ever done um Karen Dash Luminance what other luminance pencils do we have in here actually oh, we do have a few yeah I think they're mostly mostly light fast so i've been trying to collect as many greens as i possibly can because i'm loving when i'm working with lots of different greens all in one piece i think they all tend to enhance each other which i really love so this one is the grass green this is a new one for me and this isn't a green that i would previously have bought i'm much more into these kind of um, muted earthy kind of greens or something like this, which is a bit fresher. This is just sort of a really bright, um, almost emerald kind of green, really. 
but I've got it for doing landscapes and it's going to be good for spring, summer kind of landscapes. So we'll just write that there, grass green. So it'll be interesting to see how I can use that in my work. Um, this one is also a restock for me. This is one of my favourite luminance pencils, dark sap green. You see, look at the richness of this colour. It's just, it's stunning. If you want a dark bluish green, something that really is truly dark, then this one is perfect. And finally, for the luminance pencils, I got Castle Earth. So I'm trying to expand my range of browns at the moment. This one feels, I would say, a little bit more chalky. You can see it's got more little bits coming off of dusty bits so that's a lovely dark brown and useful to have okay so onto these lovely light fast pencils this is um, one i haven't tried before this is called sandstone and this is just a lovely sort of orangey rusty colour, but very muted and natural. I don't think I have anything like this in my pencil collection. It's going to come into its own when autumn comes. But also it kind of reminded me of the colours of the cliffs at Cove Hythe. They have kind of different layers of sand in them. And um, this colour reminds me so much of one of the layers you see there. So I thought if I want to work on anything that is kind of seascape-y, um, Suffolk coasty, this could be interesting to have. Sandstone. Um, and that was Derwent Lightfast. So this is another new one. This is Ivy. And that's a lovely, almost olivey kind of green. Beautiful. I'm loving just trying out all of these different greens recently. Um, I never thought that I would <laughs> own so many greens because it didn't used to be my colour and now I've become completely obsessed with it. Okay, so the next one, I think maybe we will do this one. This is Green Earth. Um, now what's the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil that I absolutely love? I think it's called Earth Green, <laughs> just the other way around. So I kind of thought that I would like this one and I do. Yeah, it's kind of similar actually. It'd be interesting to swatch them side by side, wouldn't it, to see how similar. That's beautiful. I really love the um, texture, the feel of the Derwent Lightfast pencils. They remind me quite a lot of the Luminance pencils. Um, they work quite well together actually. That's Green Earth. And this one here, oops, my box has fallen over. This one is Racing Green. This is another new one for me. Another beautiful dark green. So it's kind of similar to the dark sap green luminance, but not the same. Um, as you'll see when I hold this up at the end and you get a closer look. out of there okay so let's do these bright ones so this one is grass green 70% and it is kind of similar to the grass green luminance but lighter and seems to be a little more yellow so it's got kind of like a yellow undertone but that's a good one for this time of year as well, isn't it? 
Okay, grass green. Seventy percent. Um, doesn't like fast. And my other bright green is this vivid green. So this is new as well. And actually, this does look quite like the grass green but it's a little bit more blue. Probably if you had one, you don't really need the other, but I've become a bit of a green obsessive, so I can never have enough different shades. Vivid green, like fast. And the last pencil is the granite pencil, Dermot Light Fast. Just a lovely mid gray. Always a really useful colour to have. So this is the Liquitex Acrylic Marker Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. I really like the look of this green. So you give them a good shake and then you have to pump them up and down <laughs> until you see the paint starts flowing. These are really nice paint markers. Great for mixed media work as well. Look at that gorgeous green. Love that. Yeah, that's gonna be a nice addition to my mixed media materials. And I have the smaller version of this Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in white. I only recently bought the white and it's proven to be so useful. And so I have a slightly fatter version now. And I use this in mixed media too, so I'm just gonna show you how it will go over the top of pencil. And it's great for adding any details. Um, it's not like super duper opaque, but it has pretty good coverage <clears throat> and I really like it. I've really enjoyed using the smaller ones. So I thought it'd be useful. Oh, I've made that a bit dirty now. Always make sure you clean your pens off. <laughs> if you've gone over the top of like pencil or Neo color or something, you need to just clean them off. They're light colors like this one. Yeah, I think that's okay. But yeah, that's been a really useful thing to have in my mixed media kit because you can just add lots of interesting um, marks over the top. Um, it's been great for like white tree branches or something like that really like that and it's useful to have a chunky one. Okay so the only other dry media we have here are the Neo Pastels. So let's just, oh gosh that's lovely. Let's have a little go with that. <laughs> oh wow they're really creamy. Oh I love that, I love that thing. It's been years since I used oil pastels. Okay let's see. How they go, yeah, they go beautifully over the top of the pencil. I've just realized I'm going over the top of the pencil and I haven't actually shown you the close-ups yet. I think I better stop there, haven't I? <laughs> Let's just try this one. So that was the olive gray, was it? Is it olive gray? Yeah, that was the olive gray and this one is the khaki green. That is beautiful. Wow, they feel really nice. Of course, you can smudge them a bit, create some interesting textures and layers. So they'll be a nice addition to the mixed media work. Right, I'm gonna hold these up and hopefully underneath all of those layers, you can still see the pencil.
So let's see what these Isaro paints are like. No idea. Oh, whoops, that one's full. <laughs> no idea again whether I'm saying this correctly. So this is, you can get the lid back on, Imperial Moon. Really lovely name. These were about, I think about eight pounds something a tube. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to swatch like this um, so that we're not fussing around because I haven't got that many to swatch. I like to swatch in my pebble shaped way of swatching normally, but it's actually just quite interesting to quickly do these. That's a beautiful earthy colour, isn't it? So I actually have some shimmer. I guess we'll see when it's dry. We'll leave it to dry and then... We'll have a closer look. What does it say? It says PR101 plus something in French. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, let's try the powdery pink. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, it's so vintagey. I'm a sucker for a vintage pink. Just make sure we've rinsed that brush out properly. Oh, what a lovely natural colour. It reminds me of like, um, it's almost like the colour of some of the houses in Suffolk. <laughs> oh gosh, isn't that lovely? Wow. Oh gosh, this one would be good for botanical painters, I think. I can imagine using this in my new watercolour abstract paintings. By the way, if you're interested in following along, um, I started painting some abstract watercolours and I have them on my Instagram account, natasha.newton.abstracts. I'm going to be putting them all on there. At the time of filming, I only have a couple on there. But um, I will be adding more because this is a new series I'm working on. Okay, so this one is steel blue. Yes, this has got something pearlescent in it. So let's see. Gosh, I think these colours are gorgeous. I love the natural look of them. Yeah, I'm really getting into using watercolours more and more in general. But um, having so much fun working on some abstract paintings with them. Oh, that is an interesting blue, isn't it? I think this is quite unlike anything I have, which is amazing because I do actually have rather a lot of watercolours now. <laughs> Just gonna... Oh gosh, that's lovely. What a nice trio of colours. So that's all I bought. Um, Yes, I not only have lots of watercolour paints, but these ones are quite expensive and not knowing what they were like, I thought I'd just start with three colours that really appealed to me. So we might leave those to dry and then we'll have a closer look at those. But I can see this steel blue is separating into, is that a brown in there? So there's, yeah, a blue pigment, a brown pigment and a pearlescent I guess, particles. <laughs> so we'll see how that dries. Very interesting colour though. Okay, so, <laughs> confession. <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera on for this section. I just tried the Artgraph um, Taylor shapes. I tried them dry and you can make some really interesting marks with them because you can use them um, if I can get just one of these out again. They're a little bit messy. They'll make your hands a bit messy. But you can use them like this. So you can draw with them or you could use it like this on its side. Um, the graphite one was much smoother than the other two, but the white one went over the top of the paint quite nicely as well. So they'll be really good for mixed media. But I just want to swatch them out um, wet as well. So let's start with the white. 
It's interesting, isn't it? This little cork holder for them, this little palette. There you go, lovely opaque white. That's going to be really useful to have. Okay, let's try the black one next and I'm going to do the graphite last. Let's see how dense this is. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> that is a super opaque black. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm pleased I got these now. I was kind of like, am I going to like them or not? But I think they could be quite a versatile medium. Okay, so this one feels a bit different when you wet it. The other two feel a bit more like paint. This is more kind of slippery. Where can we? I'm just going to do it on this page down here. Oh, so that's nice. Look, it's um, more transparent. Okay, interesting. First impressions, I like them. I think you could create some really nice layers with these. If you just worked with these, actually, I think you could create something really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna hold up the paints. They're kind of drying now. This one is granulating a little bit. Oh yes, this one does have some gold shimmer as well, this Imperial Moon. So I'm gonna hold them up, but basically that is our little quick swatching session. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. It's nice sitting here, just with the back door open, the birds singing. Um, I don't know whether you can hear that wood pigeon. But if you reach the end of this video, I tell you what, if you write in the comments, wood pigeon, I'll know that you're with me at the end. Okay, I'm going to show you these and then I'm going to go. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, if you'd like to see more of this kind of video. And um, yeah, thank you. And I'll see you soon in the next one.